kind of hairy. Okay, so the designers of IPsec thought about this stuff and then came up with a couple of ways to, to a, a couple of options here. Okay, one is called transport. Well, first of all, uh, the issue here is that when we receive an IPsec packet, we have to treat it differently than an ordinary IP packet, right? We have to certainly do decryption, you know, and all that stuff we have to do. Uh, so we first have to know that it's an IPsec packet and, you know, some parameters that apply to this particular packet. So we need, the point is we need some additional header information to tell us something about this IPsec packet. So we'll just denote it this way, ESP slash A, that's coming up, okay? That's kind of the crucial information that IPsec needs to know. Okay, so where do we put this? One option is just to sort of split the thing apart and insert that additional header information right there. Okay, and just, this is sort of the minimal approach, okay? We're inserting the minimum extra bits of information that we need to handle this packet. And this is called uh, transport mode. And it implies here there's another option coming up, right? <laughs> okay, so this is for uh, so-called host-to-host communication, meaning Alice and Bob are actually doing IPsec and talking to each other, okay, using IPsec. And it is the most efficient thing you can do. Okay, so here's the picture, uh, host to host. Alice is talking to Bob, they're sending their packets over the internet, they're using IPsec to talk to each other. In this case, you would want to use transport mode. Now, the um, problem though is there may be firewalls, right? Alice may have a firewall here and or Bob have a firewall here. Now, is that a problem? Yeah, just like we said, right? The TCP stuff gets encrypted, the HTTP stuff, the data is encrypted. They certainly couldn't have an application proxy. They wouldn't be able to see the data. Even a simple, you know, port filtering thing would have trouble because it couldn't see some of that TCP stuff, couldn't see the socket information. You know, so it's an issue, okay, if there's firewalls. Okay, so people thought about that who designed it. Okay, maybe there's firewalls. So maybe people would just do the IPsec at the firewalls, not at the hosts. And in fact, that's what's done often in practice. You just have IPsec going from firewall to firewall and the hosts don't know anything about it, okay? In that case, that transport mode won't work. Okay, so they came up with this alternative, so-called tunnel mode. So you take the original packet created by Alice to send to Bob, say, this is the original packet, it gets to the firewall. The firewall then creates a new packet, treating this as the data creates a new header and puts in that, you know, extra header information it needs for IPsec. Okay, what does this header say? Would it be the same as this guy? No, this is going from Alice to Bob. This is going from where to where? Alice's firewall to Bob's firewall. Okay, so that's why we have to do something like this, just to encapsulate the old data. Okay, so this was designed for the firewall to firewall case, so we encapsulate the old data the whole packet send it on its way. So the point is when it gets to the other firewall you can strip this stuff off and you know where to send it. Okay. Uh, okay, and this is the picture. So Alice's firewall and Bob's firewall, they do the IP set. Now why is this better from the firewall's perspective? Why might they like this better? They can see what he's going through. Yeah, because they have the keys, right? So Bob's firewall gets a packet. It can decrypt it. Now it can do whatever it wants, right? It can look at all those headers. It can look at the application data. It can run any kind of firewall. So you don't have that problem of trying to look at encrypted data. But there's a problem here. Oh, that looks kind of bad, right? <laughs> okay, we're not secure on this part here on our local network. We're not getting any benefit from using IPsec on our local network. So it's a trade-off, right? You want to give up that security in order to make your firewall's life easier, or at least feasible, I guess. Yeah? You could use both kinds of IPsec, so to have the transport from the firewall, and then do the, um, the host-to-host -host network, or you can. Uh -huh. I don't know. I guess you probably could. <laughs> so you could have uh, IPsec going from host to host, and then the firewall is actually doing IPsec as well. Yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah. He's a very secure guy. <laughs> okay, so here, here's the comparison. Transport mode versus tunnel mode. Uh, this transport mode is used when? Host to host. Okay, tunnel mode is used when? 
firewall to firewall. Okay, so let's think about this, just a thought experiment here. Could you use this when you're going from host to host? Yeah, you could. Okay, now what would the IP header here be? It would be exactly the same as this. You just take this guy and repeat it here, encapsulate the old packet, you know, strip it off when you got to the other side. It would work, but why would that not be a smart thing to do? More overhead. There's a lot more overhead here than here, and this will work in the host to host case. How about firewall to firewall? Could you use this guy going from firewall to firewall? Why not? Yeah, because once it arrives at the firewall, you don't know who to send it to, right? Because it says firewall to firewall, right? And it actually goes for, to some host. So you can't use this from firewall. But technically, this is all you need, right? You could get by with this and make it work for everything, but this is more efficient. So it's kind of thrown in there as a way to make it more efficient. And here's, okay, here's something else to think about. I forgot to mention this. Suppose we're doing the host to host, uh, firewall to firewall case, okay? And we're using tunnel mode because we have to do that. Now, excuse me, your tree sitting out here watching the packets go back and forth. The header cannot be encrypted, right? So you can always see in the header who's talking to each other. Okay, well, who's talking to each other here? Firewall. Alice's firewall is talking to Bob's firewall, but you, you know, assuming it's encrypted, you don't get to see that it's actually Alice talking to Bob. So you don't know which hosts behind there are talking to each other. You just know the firewall they're talking. So, you know, you sort of get some you know, some level of anonymity there, kind of for free. Uh, okay, so again, transport mode is for host to host. Tunnel mode is for firewall to firewall. Uh, technically, transport mode is not necessary. You could do everything just with tunnel mode, uh, but it's more efficient, so it makes <laughs> sense to put it in there as an option. Okay, so now, finally, <laughs> finally we're to the point where we can actually think about what are we gonna do with these packets? Are we gonna encrypt them? Are we gonna integrity protect them? What are we gonna do to the header? What are we gonna to do to the, to, to the data itself? Again, all from the perspective of an IP packet. Now, what I find kind of interesting is, you know, up to this point, we had like a bazillion options on how to do everything. Now they give us two choices and they're almost the same. Go figure. Okay, so either do ESP or AH. Uh, AH, they call, I mean, it's short for authentication header, and this is an integrity only option. So, no confidentiality. You're not hiding the data, you're just trying to protect the integrity of it. That's not necessarily bad. It's surprising how often in practice you really care much more about integrity than confidentiality. So, it's not unreasonable to do this. Um, so, they have integrity only, and it protects the data protects the integrity of the data and some fields of the header, okay, the fields that can be protected. In contrast, there's this thing called ESP, the protocol that can read your mind, right? Okay. Um, it uh, does integrity and confidentiality, and it's required to do both, okay? You have to do both, integrity and confidentiality, okay? And it doesn't do anything to the header, okay? It doesn't touch the header, not no integrity, no confidence, nothing to the header, but the data is must be encrypted and integrity protected. Okay. But here's the here's kind of a weird quirk. You couldn't make this stuff up. Okay. So um, it's possible using ESP to do uh, integrity only. But wait, it says here integrity and confidentiality are both required. How can they both be required yet you do integrity only? Well, okay, when you implement IPsec, there are certain crypto algor algorithms that must, must be supported. One of those crypto algor algorithms is known as the null encryption algorithm. Okay, and I'm not making this up. There is an RFC that describes the null encryption algorithm. It's kind of fun. You might want to go look at it sometime. Uh, some of the quotes from it, it's a block cipher, the origins of which appear to be lost in antiquity. Uh, it can be can use keys of varying length, no initialization vector is required, and the definition of the cipher is null of any plain text with any key k is the plain text. <laughs> Get it? It does nothing. <laughs> okay, so the point is, 
if you use ESP, you specify the null encryption algorithm, you will get integrity for, for encryption, you will get integrity protection of the data, but no, no confidentiality, no encryption of the data. Got it? Okay, now how is that different from this? Not much. <laughs> it's different by a little bit, but not much. So, you know, the question then <coughs> comes up, why does this AH thing exist? Can you shut the door back there? But why does this AH thing exist at all? Why did they build this in as an option? Okay, so there's three possible explanations. Okay, the first one is uh, you can't encrypt the header, right? There's no way you can do that. But you can integrity protect some of the fields of the header. AH does that, and integrity protects some fields of the header. ESP doesn't. Okay, so it gives you a little bit more in the sense of integrity to use. Uh, AH. And they specify which specific fields they can integrity protect. That's not that big a deal, right? I mean, you could you know, put an option in ESP. You don't call it something else entirely just for this sort of trivial little difference. Okay, here's maybe a, a kind of more interesting reason. Okay, now ESP deals with the data, right? So it does confidentiality integrity for all the data. Now, AH just does integrity. Okay, now suppose you're a firewall. Alice and Bob are using IPsec host to host, and you're a firewall. A packet shows up. In that IPsec packet, it tells you whether it's using ESP or AH. If it's using AH, what do you know if you're a firewall? Do whatever you want, right? All the data, none of the data is encrypted. You can do whatever you want with it. You know, you can do all the usual things you would do. Okay, that's good from the firewall's perspective. Now suppose a packet shows up and it says ESP. What do you do? You panic, right? Okay, because you can't do anything with it if it's encrypted. But if it's encrypted with a null cipher, then you can still look, and, right? You'd still be okay. However, the information as to whether it's null encryption or not, it, the, the cipher algorithm that's being used is nowhere in the header. <laughs> that's negotiated between the endpoints. Okay, so there's a case where, you know, if it says AH, firewalls can deal with it. It says ESP, firewalls can't touch it, right? Okay, so that's a po possible explanation, you know, as to why they have this thing in there. Again, it's kind of, you know, you could easily have built this into ESP. It's just like a flag bit, right? Which version of ESP or whatever. So, so here's the real reason why uh, ESP or AH exists. Okay, this is from some authors who were actually involved in the development of IPsec. So, uh, uh, so they were at one IETF meeting and someone from Microsoft gave an impassioned speech about how AH was useless and they should remove it from the protocol, right? So everyone in the room looked around and said, hmm, he's right, we hate AH also, but if it annoys Microsoft, let's leave it in since we hate Microsoft more than we hate AH. 